Yeah, thank you very much for, for that uh, that introduction, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, everyone who's staying. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people are hungry, and uh, and uh, I won't keep you too long because uh, collaboration, the subject that I'm talking about, really is about, uh, in many ways, understanding the needs and the desires of others. And uh, so, I, if you're hungry, I'm hungry with you. And, uh, let's let's get through this and uh, and get to some networking afterward. So. Uh, my talk is about collaboration. I think we can go ahead and jump to the next slide. Uh, I'm a researcher at a, at a university in Istanbul called Coach University, uh, but I've been looking at collaborative spaces and, and how people work together in VR for a few years, even prior to my official PhD studies. Um, but but it's hard to do that, you know, or at least it was hard to do that. And then you know, COVID and all these lockdowns suddenly made this a topic that not only was everybody interested in, everybody uh, was willing to participate in research. So what we see uh, here on the screen is uh, just a, a big collage of different logos of different social and uh, collaborative VR platforms that I led explorations of during, these, uh, during 2020 and then to 2021. And these were called zero events. They were done for a community called the XR Crowd. Some of you may be either members or familiar with the XR crowd or members of the XR crowd. And uh, it started with the initial purpose to understand what platforms were plausible options for virtual events, for large scale virtual events, such as South by Southwest or Laval or the Venice International Film Festival. And, uh, and many of those curators and, uh, and organizers were part of this community. But uh, when I took over running it uh, in uh, late March, early April of 2020, I felt like in many cases, many of these organizers had kind of identified what they were looking for. Um, and what I was actually interested in, which of these platforms, not that could host a lot of people or could um, exhibit some, some uh, immersive content, but which ones would really facilitate diverse networking opportunities, diverse interactions. And, uh, and that's where I, I took the series. And that's why we looked at a lot of platforms that really don't make a lot of sense or uh, for events, so they're not they're not targeting events as a as a use case, but uh, but what they do is they do bring people together in very dynamic social uh, experiences. Uh, next slide, slide, please. So when this all started, this was a, this is a picture of Engage, uh, which is another platform some of you may be familiar with. This was the XR Base Investor event. This was done as a part of Laval, uh, the Laval Virtual uh, Conference in 2020. And uh, this was, as I remember, April, probably April of 2020. And this is what, uh, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I'm looking up at the screen and then I'm looking back at you and, and um, it's, this is a much better looking venue, no question. I mean, this is a beautiful venue, but what we had here is not too different than this. It's kind of a, kind of a passive experience in the sense that if someone's up on a stage, very traditionally, very familiar, uh, types of knowledge transfer, and uh, and there's a group of people all, all kind of listening around, and this is still very very popular. But what, um, but what at least within the specific context of collaboration, we found is people willing to diversify and get into some other types of environments that don't mimic exactly how we might come together in real world. Um, so this is really a recreation, a simulation of what an organizer thinks knowledge transfer. In a, in, a, in a large social environment should be. And it's not wrong, it's just, it is a simulation of what we've taken for granted as the best way to do this physically. But as I said, virtually, we're starting to find other ways to do this. Next slide, please. So what we can do when we get into these virtual spaces is we don't have to necessarily be as big. You know, to organize a conference, you have a limit as to what you can do with space. You, you have one venue or you have a, a single physical venue, which may be cut up a lot of different ways, but there's just one. But virtually, you can have an almost infinite number of spaces and they can take all these different forms. And in doing so, you can really bring people into smaller groups than you could do uh, when you're dealing with larger, larger groups of people physically, because you don't, again, have this issue of finding the space to put five to six people. So this is another example of one of these meetups that we did during the Zero Fest, which was not really exploring a platform, but exploring the design of a platform 
um, and what would be a more comfortable space to meet. So here we were meeting in a garage type of environment that was actually made even a little bit more claustrophobic by adding a lot of dynamic um, uh, objects to it. And this was an experiment led by one of our members from McKinsey that um, was trying to confirm this expectation that if we go into a big open space, kind of like the one we're in, we're less likely to want to really stay there and communicate for a long period of time because it's very broad and it's open. We're kind of drawn to explore. We're, we're drawn to separate. Uh, but in this type of uh, this smaller virtual space, the idea was, and, and this event was at least evidence in support of it, is that it makes us feel like mammals again, small mammals in a burrow. We want to be close to each other and we want to be safe and warm and, and, and in, a, in a small space. And, um, you know, again, when it comes to virtual events and a virtual collaboration, you have what you have physically. You have the space that you have. You can't do much to change it, but of course, virtually you can change it. And what we, what I've seen at least, uh, and I think it's it's a fair point to say, is that more and more collaborative spaces in platforms uh, like uh, Glue and like Engage and like uh, maybe even Arthur are more willing to allow people to host small events in very small places. In the beginning, in 2020, what you saw like in Meet in VR was a great example. Um, and, and others were very similar. They would have these giant vistas. They, they would have an office floating in the sky surrounded by uh, just just epic space, you know, just tons and tons of space because space was free in VR and, and people like to have big open areas. But um, but again, what, what was found in collaboration is that you want people to feel comfortable being close to each other uh, and, and, you know, talking for a while, really staying in a conversation longer than they might otherwise if they're distracted by this big open area around them. Um, and so again, what we're, I think what we're seeing is more and more, we're moving away from having this big, impressive, you know, overwhelmingly beautiful vistas to getting to what, what types of spatial design really uh, facilitates active uh, interaction, conversation and, uh, and collaboration ultimately. Next slide, please. So here's a couple platforms that I think they're not necessarily new. They've been around. I'm sure many of you have seen Glue. Uh, some of you might not have seen Arthur, but it's another one. And um, these are, are really both strong platforms in their own way. Strong platforms specifically for collaboration, for working together, for um, exchanging information, ideas, annotating, and, uh, and, and passing knowledge back and forth. But the difference, as I kind of alluded to before, is in whether it's something is traditional or something that's a little bit less traditional in, in how we're working. So on the left, Glue, for the large part, you know, they don't have to, it's up to the client, but generally speaking, when they demo uh, and when they make their, their presentations of themselves, they're following more of a traditional office type of environment and they do the best to make it very, very comfortable. And I gotta say, Glue is the most comfortable VR experience that uh, that I think I've had with a group of 11 people uh, or more. You know, the audio is just right. The lighting seems to be just right. The animated avatars are really, really quite good. So, I mean, they do a really great job, but they're also very, very traditional. And for some people or for some, for some sectors, that type of conference table and conference room, just that's not what we want, you know, and uh, it's not easy to change it. Uh, at least with Arthur, Arthur is a little bit more abstracted. They also kind of follow a campus perspective, like a university, not a university, sorry, a corporate campus um, model. But they do a lot more, as you'll see here, with just spatial presentation of information. We can create these, di these dynamic networks of objects, link them. You know, obviously you can import objects like you can in the other ones, but they allow you to much more dynamically use space. Um, and this can become very overwhelming. Uh, it's not easy to do it well, but if you do it well, of course, it's it's something that is just a little bit more dynamic, engaging, and customizable than perhaps in the in the glue, the traditional glue example with the with a screen presentation. Uh, next slide, please. But as I was alluding to, when we get down into certain sectors, and it's like, who really wants to collaborate in VR? Is it going to be the accounting office? of a large international firm and it's not that they can't do it, but they're not the ones probably, 
you know, jumping to adopt this right now. The communities and the sectors, the types of people and skill sets that are looking to collaborate in VR now are really on the creative sector. Uh, it's not only that, but I think this is, uh, this is, we're seeing the most creation, most collaboration, at least I see in VR is for people who are making things for VR or for VR audiences or meant to be consumed in VR. This is an example of VR chat, which again, I'm sure many of you are intimately familiar with. And this is from the Venice International Film Festival's networking session, meet the directors. And this is where projects come out, where people come together and say, we're going to work together on a project. And um, this is just an example where you don't have to have a platform that's designed for collaboration. Altspace is another good example. Altspace is not designed for collaboration. It doesn't have almost any of what we would consider the traditional collaborative tools. But what it does is it creates an environment where people can feel unique, they can feel represented, they can, uh, and they can talk. They can talk together in a space that it could be itself inspiring. And so VR chat does the same. And at the bare bones, that's all you need for collaboration in VR is to be there with other people, feel like you're, you are accurately represented the way you want to be, and in a place that's stimulating to you, stimulating of the conversation that you're having with that other person. Next slide, please. And here's, um, maybe I'll go a little quicker because I'm re maybe uh, duplicating what I'm saying. Here is Neos, and this is just another example of dynamically using space. We're here in a, in a venue, in just a, a bedroom, and we're having a discussion about how you would create a collaborative room inside of Neos. What type of functionality would we be, we be programming? And we all decided to be hovering off the ground about 10 feet, and we're just creating all these interfaces in real time. They were not there before. And we're just using space to illuminate connectivity and to make lists and uh, very simple. But Neos, because it's a collab, it's a creative platform, it becomes perhaps the most powerful of all potential collaborative platforms because it allows creation in the platform. You know, even things like Glue and Arthur, Arthur does a little bit, but Glue and Meet and VR really, that's not what they're specialized in. They're bringing in uh, creative products from other mediums. Next slide, please. And so when I allude to Neos, of course, I'm also talking about Rec Room. Rec Room, for my money, is right up there with Neos. It's perhaps the most powerful collaborative platform because of all the creative tools it has. But you have to know how to use them, and you have to be comfortable to use them in front of others if you're going to do this in a synchronized environment. And that's where we get a real, a real challenge. I think collaboration, collaboration in VR is going to be a generational thing. At the moment, we're fortunate if we can get talented people to take seriously the conversations that they have in VR. But more and more, we have VR native communities that are just by nature, by, by preference and comfort, they're working together in VR. And as those communities grow, we'll see more and more sophisticated forms of collaborative environments in VR. But, uh, but right now, 90% of it's going to just be talking to each other. And that's fine if we, if we choose to talk in the right platforms. Uh, again, this environment here being really quite me the most beautiful all space platform I, I've seen. So as long as we're in the right place and we, we're with the right people, we're going to collaborate. We don't need a whole lot more, but there is a lot more. It just takes a lot of effort to get good enough to use them. Uh, next slide, please. I think that actually might be the end. Yes, that is the end. Yeah, thank you very much for your, your time and attention.